Hey everyone, it's Mrs. Weber here. I am excited to share with you a little bit about my creative process on my Fovist self-portrait. So today I'm gonna to answer the prompts um, for our virtual reflection. Um, and I'm gonna start with the first one, which is how did I go from a photograph to using grid lines and then ultimately to painting on a canvas? So we started with a photograph and we measured one inch grid lines, uh, vertical and horizontally. And then we um, just multiplied it by two. So then it became two inch grid lines when we transferred it to the canvas. Uh, we did this with pencil first, um, and then we filled in trying to be as proportional as possible um, when we put it onto our canvas. Um, I'm not sure if you can tell, but I added extra grid lines just around my eyes because that was a really challenging section for me. Um, so then when I transferred it to my canvas, that took some extra time. And then um, when I started painting, I used color studies to determine what sort of colors I wanted, um, but I actually ended up changing the colors throughout. Um, so I'll explain that in the next few prompts. Um, and I used a combination of acrylics and watercolor. So our next prompt is how did we use color studies throughout the process? Um, I did two main color studies. This one was my first one. Um, it's obviously very rough, but my original intention was to have a lot of purples um, and reds offset with a little bit of yellow. Um, what ended up happening was I only pulled these colors from the art studio before I left campus. So I only had four acrylic colors with me and they didn't quite Trans translate to what I originally wanted. Um, but then I looked at my watercolor palette and I saw so much more option there. So I ended up adjusting my color study and I did it with watercolors from home. So you can see that's a little bit more true to what I ended up doing with greens in the background because I had a green acrylic. So I figured might as well fill in the background with the green. Um, and then that also made me want to do more reds in my hair. Um, and then just a little bit of blue accent in my earring and in my lanyard. And then um, I did a, pur a purple undertone to my shirt. So I started with um, a purple acrylic and then I did black watercolor over the shirt to make it look like there was a little bit of maroon. So it wasn't just a flat black. Um, but I didn't want to do a bright color on my shirt. I didn't want my, my shirt to be the most important part. So I wanted it to recede a little bit. Um, so that really helped me doing two different color studies, um, which leads me to my third prompt, which is how did I adapt to painting from home? Um, I have to say it was really hard to start painting from home, um, mostly because of my color limitations. Um, I started experimenting to try to um, use more watercolor. I was, I started this, composition thinking it was going to be 100% acrylic and so then I had to pivot and add watercolor to some parts of the composition that were already done in acrylic. So for example when I did the green acrylic in the background it was like a, a very bright kelly green and I felt like it was too bold for a background color so then I took some different greens in my watercolor palette that had a little bit more blue tones to them and then I added the watercolor to my dried green acrylic background. Um, I actually did it twice so that it uh, would really mute the background. Um, it ended up giving me a really interesting texture because when the watercolor dried on top of the acrylic, it actually turned a little bit chalky, almost white, in addition to the tone that I was using, um, which I liked because it made the background um, a little more organic looking, a little more texturized, and I, I actually liked that. So that was a good surprise when I adapted um, the composition to two different types of paint. Uh, I did the same thing with my um, pull down screen from the classroom. This is the projector screen. Um, I wanted to choose a Fovis color there. So I did like a really bright yellow as watercolor first. Um, but then I pulled this color from the studio and I thought I would try it, but it ended up being um, two golds. Um, which is like a very natural color, but for it to be fovist, I wanted it to be brighter and a little less natural. So then I went to my watercolor and I added um, these two watercolors over my dried gold acrylic. 
And again, with just like with the green, it added like a chalky dimension when it dried, which I really like for the background. Um, something else I did to adapt um, from to painting from home is um, my color choices on my face. My um, second color study you can see doesn't even have a face on it. I was so frustrated that I didn't have that many colors at home that I actually left the face totally blank, kind of making a decision of like, well, I'll just go with it in the moment and choose colors as I go. Well, it turns out that the colors I chose are a little bit more like my first color study with some purples. Um, and then instead of like an orange segment, sorry, orange segment on this side, I decided to do yellow because I thought it would um, correspond well with my, uh, my gold in the background. So um, those are some ways that I adapted to painting from home. It also probably took me longer than it, like at home than it would have if we were still in the classroom. Um, because I did a little bit here and there in um, little tiny bite-sized pieces <laughs> over probably four or five weeks. Um, I actually did a lot over spring break especially, but um, if we were in the classroom, I would have had more devoted time um, and maybe wouldn't have taken me so many weeks overall. But because I enjoyed it so much, I don't really mind. Um, it was like therapy for me at the end of the day to take out my paints and um, just have fun with color. All right, our next prompt is what specific details are fauvist? Well, if you can't tell, the color is fauvist, but more specifically, um, the fauvist colors I chose, um, actually, I think it'd be good if I showed you my, my photograph in color so you can see just how different the colors are. So I went with a bright blue lanyard instead of a black one. I went with a maroon undertone to my black shirt so that even my black shirt could be a little bit more fauvist. And then the biggest features that are fauvist in the foreground um, are my hair and face colors. So I went with red on my, for my hair um, because that's obviously not a natural red color for me at least. Some people have red hair, but not me. Um, I do have some auburn in my hair though. So I felt like if I kept some of my normal skin tone on my composition, but then highlighted the red in my hair, it would still work. Um, I actually really like the way that the red turned out. I think it's kind of fun to explore what it would look like if I dyed my hair that color. Um, don't worry, I'm not going to, but it's fun to see it on the canvas. Um, and then something else that's fauvist is I played with the shadow and light lines on my face. Um, I did purple on one side and yellow on the other. Obviously not natural colors, obviously not part of my, my normal face. Um, I chose purple so that it would really be offset with the red since the red is right there on my hairline. Um, and then the yellow I chose um, in contrast to the blues and the greens elsewhere on the composition. So I tried to stay complementary and fauvist all at the same time. Let me see if I can put this back. Can you still see it? Okay. All right, favorite part. Um, my favorite part's probably the hair. Um, I added different strands of hair in different shades of red over many, many, many different painting sessions. Um, and it was just kind of fun to work out the details of that. So I would say the, fair, the hair is my favorite part. Um, the part that I wish I could do differently, um, let's say I still had limited resources painting from home, um, with all the circumstances the way that they were, if I could do it again, I would probably change my eyes. I think my eyes are not proportional. They're a little big. And then the eyelashes turned out too long, in my opinion. Um, so I would probably refine the eyes a little bit more and maybe I could have done like a focus color inside my eyes But because I had so many other colors on my face I actually kept my eye color as similar as I could to my actual real um, Eye color. So maybe I could have done that part differently um, Okay, so that's a little bit about my creative process. I had so much fun making this um, I just wish I could have done it alongside all of you in our classroom um, so this will be our second best um, way to connect through art. Um, yeah, so I look forward to seeing your videos and here, this was your example. So you can replay this as many times as you need. Um, please refer to our prompts so that you know what to say when it's your turn to film, your reflection, and I cannot wait to see what you've created. All right, bye artists.